This is Katrin with Disability Rights New York. Welcome to our podcast, Empire State of Rights, closed captioned. We are here to bring you information on the most relevant topics regarding disability rights and advocacy. Today we have Julie Michaels-Keegan, PAD Director at DRNY. She's here to discuss the 2019 Special Education Task Force Conference. Hi, Julie. How are you today? Good morning, Katrin. So this is a 22nd annual conference for the Special Education Task Force. Can you tell us a little bit about this event and why it's so important? Absolutely. This is one of my favorite events of all time. I've been participating in it for almost 15 years now. Um, So it is our 22nd annual. And what's really unique about the Special Education Task Force Conference is that it's designed for all the stakeholders involved in special education. So that includes families, students, service providers, and of course, school personnel. So we really design our topics and choose our speakers in a way that attracts all of those groups and most importantly, gets them into the room together and to hear each other's perspectives. We feel that this really is a model that will lead to better communication and reduce conflict. That's great. And so just for the um, facts about the conference, when is it and where is it? So we are holding the conference this year at the Hilton Garden Inn in Troy, New York. It's going to be on Friday, March 29th. It starts at 9 in the morning and runs till 4 p.m. So we've got a great list of people who are speaking at this event. Can you talk to us about the topics that are going to be covered? Definitely. And I'm so excited to do this. I think this is one of our best lineups ever. So first and foremost, we have Assistant Commissioner uh, Christopher Suriano from the New York State Education Department. Um, He will be delivering our keynote address on the state of the state of special education. Mr. Suriano came into office about two and a half years ago. Um, And obviously, there's a lot happening in special education. There's a lot of issues that are of concern um, to stakeholders. And there's a lot of new initiatives that the state education department is launching. And so this is a great opportunity for everyone, families, parents, stakeholders, school professionals to learn about what's really going on at state ed. Um, In addition to that, um, we have some great topics that are highly relevant to the types of cases and concerns that we're receiving here at Disability Rights New York and that we're hearing about from our regional task forces. So we have a great session on challenging behavior and how to address behavior issues in schools. Um, Behavior can be one of those things that can lead to more restrictive placements. It can be disruptive to the student themselves and other students in the classroom. And so addressing behavior is really a concern of many school professionals and parents, but also something that we have a lot of guidelines about on how to address that. So we have uh, Gina Cosgrove and one of her colleagues, Dr. Gina Cosgrove and one of her colleagues coming to speak to us about what do we really need to do when when behavior is an issue at school. And I'm very confident there will be many people wanting to hear more about that topic. Um, In addition to that, we have um, two different sessions. One is on trauma-informed strategies that work, and another on an anxiety. Um, Anxiety and trauma are pretty hot topics these days. Um, Many students of all ages, from elementary up through high school, are experiencing anxiety at school. And some of these are connected to a disability, so it may be a student on the autism spectrum that has anxiety, or it could just be an individual who's developed anxiety, and and that's kind of a mental health issue. Um, So how do we deal with anxiety? What is the best way to go about that? This is huge because in many instances, students sometimes stay home from school. And when they're home, they're, they're not really accessing education. They're not able to interact with their peers. Yet when they're at school, the anxiety is sort of crippling. So this presentation is really going to look at how can we address anxiety in a way that enables a student to be and participate in school. Um, and that's a really great topic because we think about even as adults and how this work will lead to more students coming out of school being able to transition into adulthood with these skills. 
Exactly. So we're very excited about that one. Um, we're also going to offer a session on inclusion and how to make inclusion work. Again, inclusion can be one of those controversial topics. Um, there are, and it and it doesn't matter whether you're a parent or a school professional or an outside provider. People have strong feelings about yes, inclusion must happen. It's a great thing. And there's others who feel like no, my child needs special services, or in order to teach this child, they need to be in a different classroom. And so so there's many strong feelings about it. We're very happy to have the speaker um, on this topic that has a lot of experience working with inclusion, has a lot of research that has been done on inclusion that many people are not aware of, and has a lot of practical strategies on how to make that happen in a classroom when it works, how to make it work. And finally, we have a session on sex education and students with disabilities. Um, this is another new topic. It's not um, an area that we've covered before at the task force conference, although many of our regional task forces have offered this as a topic, um, and a lot of people have found it very beneficial. We don't often think about sex ed and students with disabilities, but in fact, many students, particularly those with intellectual and developmental disabilities, don't get any sex ed at all. So if they're in a special class, they're not getting that information. It's obviously an uncomfortable topic for parents. It opens a can of worms. They're very uncomfortable about it. Um, yet our laws require that every student receive sex education, or at least the the option of receiving it. Many schools allow parents to opt out. So we have a speaker coming from Planned Parenthood who regularly provides um, training on sex ed, how to how to offer sex ed and tailor it to the audience or the students that, that are receiving it and the benefits of doing that. Um, there's a lot of research that demonstrates that individuals, particularly those with intellectual and developmental disabilities who are not receiving any information are actually in fact more vulnerable to abuse and neglect because they're not, they don't know what might be appropriate or inappropriate or how to respond in a situation. Um, and unfortunately, women with disabilities are the most vulnerable of all um, individuals to um, abuse. So we feel this is an important topic people need to learn about, and I think they will also get practical strategies out of that. Um, and one more that I do want to talk about, too, is we're looking at school discipline and some of the options around school discipline. Uh, a lot of times we're only thinking about suspension um, and that or detention. Um, and obviously that that's not helpful to anyone. It, it's keeping a kid out of school. Um, the school might have to find tutors. Um, so it's complex. But there are other options. One of them is restorative practices and restorative justice model. And so we have some great speakers to come talk to us about those options. So for our audience members who are not familiar with Special Education Task Force or this conference, is this conference only for people who are new to special education? Absolutely not. And that's something we really carefully consider when we're thinking about the types of sessions that we're going to offer. And when we're kind of giving guidance to our speakers, um, we instruct them that there are some individuals in the audience who may be brand new, whether they're family members or, or school professionals. Um, and there may be people who have been doing this for many years and have a lot of knowledge. So the speakers are really trying to guide um, their their comments and um, offer a time for questions and answers too. But typically, we we have very good feedback um, from regardless of the amount of experience because we're talking about topics that are very relevant. But in addition to that, we do have um, a track of sessions. So there's a total of nine sessions. Um, there's three concurrent sessions. So one of those tracks is 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 called a back to basics track. And that's really for people who are brand new to special education and may need to learn more about, you know, just fundamental rights and procedures. And so in that lineup this year, we have um, a session on testing accommodations. When are they appropriate? How do I get them? Um, what should we be thinking about? We have a session on bullying and students with disabilities. Um, what are some responses? What are the laws that are related to that? Um, and finally, we have a session that's about the pathways to graduation, which is a very complex area. Uh, these days, there are many different ways that we can earn a Regents diploma or a local diploma, and there are other credentials that are available if a student is unable to make to reach those. So this will be kind of a flat out session on what are those different pathways. So we, we put those definitely, and they may be of interest certainly to people who have been involved for a long time, but we're trying to really gear those to people who are new. 
So anyone who is interested in attending the conference and are in need of an accommodation in any way, is this event accessible? And if there is an accommodation that's needed, is there a way to contact someone here for that? Sure. Um, Of course, it's an accessible conference. um, And the Hilton Garden Inn has been fantastic in that regard. We've held many events there, and we actually held this event, this conference there last year. Um, So it is fully accessible. If there are particular accommodations, such as um, the need for materials in a different uh, format, although we do provide all the materials on a thumb drive, um, or any other kind of accommodation, simply make that known when you register. Or And there's also a contact information uh, to do that on the registration form. That's great. Is there parking available for this event? Yes. Actually, there's a very ample parking lot, um, and they have overflow parking as well. I'm thinking they may have valet, but I'm not positive about that. Um, but we, again, ran, we didn't run into any parking issues last year. It is a very large parking lot at the Hilton Garden Inn. And is there anything else you want to let us know about this event that's coming up? Just that I really encourage people to attend. Um, we really try to make it an affordable conference, and we offer a lot. So in, in addition to these wonderful sessions with fantastic speakers, um, we offer a continental breakfast. There's snacks and beverages available through the day, and there's also a buffet lunch for people, and that's all included in the registration price. Um, We do have uh, scholarships available for parents, um, and we're able to do that because we receive funding from the New York State Developmental Disabilities Planning Council to help offset some of those costs. Um, We we charge um, a higher fee for professionals, but a lower fee for individuals who are family members or students themselves. And we can uh, list the link for the invitation at the bottom of this podcast so people can see what different price ranges there are for the tickets. And also, we're still looking for vendors, aren't we? Yes, um, this is a fantastic opportunity. We typically have about 150 people attend this event. And it's interesting, year after year, when you look at who's coming, it really breaks down into about a third are parents or family members, a third are school professionals, and the, the rest are kind of service providers or other stakeholders. So it's a fantastic forum for people who have products or services that um, are sort of tailored or available for students with disabilities. Um, And we afford time and sort of presence um, because of the location of where the vendors are. They they can't be missed um, when people come. So it's a great opportunity for vendors to let people know what they do. Great. We'll put the link to the vendor registration form at the bottom of the podcast as well. If you have any questions about the New York State Special Education Task Force Conference, please visit our website at www.nyspecialedtaskforce.org. Empire State of Rights Closed Captioned has been brought to you by Disability Rights New York, your source for disability rights and advocacy. If you enjoyed our program, and we hope you did, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this post. If there is a subject you would like us to discuss, please email podcast at drny.org or comment below. Tune in next time, where we'll bring you more information on disability rights in the state of New York. The closed-captioned version of this podcast is available on our YouTube channel.